Hey guys, this is Dr. Sangeeta and welcome back to another lecture of Dental Patshala. In today's video, we are going to talk about the principles of root canal preparation and in that we are going to study the laws of pulp chamber anatomy or the laws of root canal anatomy. All the clinicians should be familiar with this term because almost all the clinicians are doing root canal treatment and these principles are based on how we should prepare the canal, how we should prepare the root canal. So, these the preparation is based on some principles. These principles are made in order to avoid ledging, in order to avoid zipping and in order to avoid perforation. So basically these principle tells us that the outline, how the outline form should be, how the uh, retention of GP should be, how the resistance should be. So basically these tells the good root canal treatment, how and we can reach an excellent root canal treatment. So, in order to get a good result, we should know all these principles. Now, the outline form tells that we should have a complete excess of the instrument up till the apical foramen. So, the instrument should go, we should have the outline form such that once we place the instrument, it should reach up till the apex of the root. And it has these external outline features resemble the internal anatomy of the tooth. For example, if I say that this is the external anatomy of the crown. So the anatomy of the root at our CEJ would be like this. So these are some principles which governs the how laws of pulp chamber anatomy, how the pulp chamber is going to be, how a root canal orifice is going to be at the cemento enamel junction. So these will come all under the outline from these laws of pulp chamber anatomy or we can say the laws of root canal orifice. The convenience form says that, see, all of these things are based on its name itself. So, outline form is how the outline of root canal should be. Convenience form is how conveniently a file is going into the root canal. That means, how without any obstruction, if the file is going, without any binding to the dentine, that file is going, there should be a direct access to the apical foramen and the cavity extension should be such that, that it accommodate, accommodates the feeling. It accommodates our files. So, remain, removal of the remaining carriers then is done in order to eliminate all the bacteria in order to prevent the discoloration of the tooth and also in order to prevent the bacteria which is present in the saliva and leaking into the prepared cavity, leaking into the root canal. So, we should remove all the carious dentine. This is very important because post-op pain, most of the times the post-operative pain are due to some pulp horns are remaining either or any carious dentine is remaining inside the tooth. And then toilet of the cavity, that means toilet of the cavity means flush. We are basically flushing. So, this toilet of the cavity means we are flushing all of the caries, all of the debris, all of the necrotic material from the pulp chamber. So, we are removing all of the, in the lateral canal as we have some canals in which even file cannot go, right? So, we have the lateral canals as we have studied. So, we have some lateral canal or accessory canal. All these canals actually the file cannot reach. So, we should irrigate our root canal uh, cavity. So, the root canal preparation, uh, we are irrigating it constantly so that there, whatever the uh, pulp is remnant, whatever the debris is remnant, it should flush out. It should come out of the canal. And then there is the outline and convenience form of the radicular. So, this was about the coronal. We are talking about uh, CEJ here. Radicular is when we are talking about the root. So, the outline and the convenience form is same as that of the coronal part and there should be retention form. That means when we are putting the GP, it should have a tuck back. It should have a tight seal and resistance form is that, that we are when we are placing the GP that there should not be overflow of the GP. It should not go beyond the dentino uh, cemento cemento dentinal junction, so it should not go beyond the CDJ or you can say uh, DCJ. So it should be like that. So let's study more about more detail into the laws of pulp chamber and about the principles of root canal preparation. So let's get started. <laughs> Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel if you enjoy watching our videos and make sure to click on the bell icon. That way you get a notification as soon as I release a video lecture talking about the principles of root canal preparation. So the first principle is the outline form and in order to access a good eye outline form, 
it should be like that the outline form of the root canal it should be like that suppose this suppose this is our root and this blue one is our root canal so in order to get a good outline form our instrument should go inside the cavity up till the apical foramen so it should be first of all it should be straight line axis and second thing is that that it should have a complete axis up till the apical foramen so we should have a complete axis and the external outline form resembles the internal anatomy of the of the tooth so that means if the tooth is if suppose this is a maxillary incisor right so this is the incisal view so the pulp the anatomy of the pulp chamber the anatomy of our pulp chamber will be similar to as that of our anatomy of the external structure of the tooth so pulp chamber is going to be sim as similar as our external surface of the tooth so this these all are factors so it depends on the size of the pulp chamber shape of the pulp chamber so these outline form actually depend on all of these factors like what is the size of the pulp chamber what is the shape of the pulp chamber and how many root canals are present in a specific tooth so these morphology of the pulp chamber is in relation to the clinical crown of the uh, a clinical crown of the tooth so the how the crown is supposed to be the pulp chamber will be as same as our outline structure of the tooth so the relationship of orifice on to the pulp and to the uh, the chamber on to the pulp chamber floor so the orifice will be on the pulp chamber floor as we all know that so these orifice and the pulp chamber relationship to the tooth is given by the laws of the root canal orifice or laws of the pulp chamber anatomy these laws were given by krasner and renko so these principle are the first one is the law of centrality law of centrality means the always always the pulp chamber is going to be in the center of the tooth neither see suppose if this is our incisal view right so never it will be on the mesial side never it will be on the distal side it is always going to be in the center of the tooth if we talk about at the level of cj so you have to remember this all of these laws are basically at the level of cej so cej is very important anatomical landmark for all of these laws so we are talking about at the orifice at the orifice level at the pulp chamber uh, level at cej cemento enamel junction where the enamel meets so we are talking about where the enamel so suppose so we are talking at the level of cej so where the enamel meets the uh, root so the crown meets the root we are talking about this level so all these laws are at this level first of all the law of centrality means as the name suggests i have been always telling you go for the name and you can write it on your own you don't have to even remember it law for the centrality means it should be at the center so pulp chamber is going to be at the center of the tooth law of concentricity means see these are concentric circles so concentric means parallel to each other that means the surface are going to be parallel to each other suppose this is the, the suppose this is the inside labial surface so it is going to be the pulp chamber of the labial surface is going to be parallel now you can see for this also this is also law of concentricity because these are in the concentric these are all are parallel so the wall of the pulp chamber is always going to be concentric to the external surface of the tooth again at the level of our cej now the third law is law at the cj law of the cj so law of the cj is Uh, tells that first of all cj is the most important anatomical landmark for locating the position of the pulp chamber so first we should reach at the cj and at the cj we are going to know about the orifice we are going to know about the position of the pulp chamber so distance from the external surface of the crown to the wall of the pulp chamber is throughout same that means that means it is saying that if we look at every angle this distance is going to be equidistant that means it is going to be same throughout uh, the tooth so it says that the distance from the external surface of the tooth of the crown to the wall of the pulp chamber to the wall of the pulp chamber 
is going to be uh, equal throughout is going to be same throughout the uh, surface at the again level of cj so we have all of these law we have along at the level of the cj and you know uh, clinically when you know that you have reached cj is all about the law of the color change so law of the color change tells that the floor of the pulp chamber is always darker than the wall because this is obvious pulp chamber is going to be a lot of pulp that means are going to be lot of redness so if in this redness if a dark layer is there right suppose it is getting getting darker 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 so this color it is going to be so if we talk about the orifice so the orifice is always the floor of the pulp chamber is always darker than the wall so this is how even you can see that this is going to be the orifice so the pulp chamber is always darker than coming to the uh, loss of the orifice location now loss of the orifice location tells us about where the orifice is going to be now to understand this the first law of orifice location states that the orifice is located at the junction of the walls and the floor what does that mean now walls i'm going to make from the green and floor of the pulp chamber right floor of the pulp chamber i am going to make it from the blue so this blue is the floor and these are the dentinal walls so these green color are the dentinal walls suppose if i look at this is the this is the wall right so i have made it square so this is the cross section of this so these are the dentinal walls and this is the pulp chamber now the orifice will always be located at the uh, at the junction basically the orifice is going to be located at the junction of the wall and the floor so this is our first law of orifice location that means it says that it is always going to be at the junction between the walls and the floor this the orifice of the root canal and also if you see if the orifice you have located is present between the junction like if it is coming in between either it is coming between the walls and it is coming inside so if it is covering like this suppose if your orifice is coming like this it is coming on the wall of the half of the portion and half of the portion is coming on the floor so this your uh, orifice is going to be sloping in that case because it is covering most of the wall and most of the floor so this case scenario is known as the mouse wall if in mouse hall effect now can you see these mouse actually they they make a, a hole like this so this is the mouse hall effect because the mouse also stain stays like this if you have seen um tom and jerry so it is the home of the mouse is like this so it is present on the floor as well as on the wall but this isn't correct because when the orifice is present at the axial wall that means you you are not supposed to you are not inserting the file directly see if it is present in the floor or at the junction then you can go directly like this if suppose it is present then you are not going exactly into the straight line axis so you will not reach a pike under preparation which is going to be left so in order for a straight line axis the orifice of the canal it should be present at the junction between the walls and the floor now coming to the second law of orifice location states that it is located at the angle in the floor and wall junction so it is neither going to be present here nor going to be present here nor it is going to be present here it is always going to be present at the angle so where the floor and wall are making angle it is going to be at that level now coming to the third law of root canal orifice is that at the terminus so the orifice is located at the terminus of the root development fusion line so where these lines are formed where the root is fused with crown right so these are the lines of the root canal there you will find the orifice where the root where the fusion line of the roots terminal are made so these are the orifice location loss orifice of the root canal is located at the junction of the wall and the floor and orifice of the root canal are located at the junction of these angles not not somewhere on the floor but located at the junction of axial wall as well as on the pulpal floor now coming to the laws of symmetry see laws of symmetry have exception okay these laws of symmetry has a exception of maxillary molars as you all know 
that maxillary molars we have already covered the anatomy and because of these are the triangular shape if fourth canal is not present so these orifice of the canal are actually the first law of symmetry says that there is going to be symmetry that means so there is going to be if suppose this is the tooth and this one is our mesiodistal surface of the tooth this one is the buccolingual surface so if you look at the mesiodistal surface of the tooth now these orifices are going to be present at the equidistant so orifices of the canal that means if you draw a line from the center of mesiodistal then these orifices are going to be present at the equidistant that means the distance is going to be same which are present on the mesial as well as on the distal side so the orifice of the root canal are equidistant from the line drawn in the mesiodistal direction through the pulp chamber floor so this is our law of symmetry 1 which is exception of maxillary molar law of symmetry 2 states that the other uh, root the orifice is going to be present perpendicular to the lawn, line drawn see th this is the mesiodistal uh, right so if a line is drawn means perpendicular to this mesiodistal so if a line is drawn so these are not present obliquely so the orifice are going to be present a line perpendicular to the mesiodistal line so this is a oblique so this one is wrong so the orifice according to the law of symmetry two states that they are going to be present the line drawn perpendicular to the orifices of the canal which are lying on the mesiodistal direction across the center of the floor so this is our these are the laws of canal orifice or laws of the pulp chamber anatomy these laws were given by krasner and ranko and because these laws are revolving around cej cemento enamel junction so it is the north star for locating the pulp chamber so this is all around the our cemento enamel junction now talking about the convenience form the second one we have is our convenience form so convenience form is we are without any obstruction we are reaching up to the apex of the canal so without any obstruction a file is not binding anywhere so this is the convenience that means conveniently we are getting a straight line access so this is our convenience form so the access should be expanded so that the instrument do not bind to the walls and the instrument especially when we are using a larger instrument and a less flexible instrument that it should not bind it should go to till the apex of the root canal so this is a sham of pre pre preparation if we say leaf like preparation leaf appearance preparation it should be and any failure in the convenience form is going to be in a failure either ledge is going to form shelf is going to form within the canal or instrument may break because if it binds the instrument may break or either any zipping is going to be present so ledging is suppose this is the root canal so ledging is when you are instrumenting extra so like this you are making ledges because of your file so you have prepared it like this so these are the ledges which are formed okay so next one is removing of the carious dentine now we should remove the all of the carious dentine this is the first step so before preparing the canal first we should all the coronal part or uh, all the carious dentine we should remove first uh, it is done to eliminate the bacteria so that bacteria do not go inside our root canal so first we should prepare before going to the canal orifice we should remove all of the carious dentine because it is going to discolor the tooth or the bacteria may go into our prepared cavity then the toilet of the cavity toilet of the cavity is not um, not the toilet it is basically flushing all of the debris all of the bad content so whatever is present in the pulp if this is our again pulp cavity then while we are inserting our file suppose we are inserting our file like this like this like this like this okay so this is how we are doing cleaning and shaping so when we are inserting the file like this so here and there there is little bit of first of all heat generation uh, because of the instrumentation and second thing is that so much of pulp chamber so much of debris so much of necrotic material so much of caries is left 
so in order to do that we are always irrigating the pulp chamber so we have already studied the irrigating materials so we are putting edta along with the file and uh, and then irrigating with the sodium hypochlorite this is how we do but you can also use chlorhexidine gluconate digluconate and you can also use mtad so there are uh, multiple things which you can use which we use on a regular basis i am telling you this so basically it dissolves all of the necrotic this is why we have read irrigation see everything has importance the theory which you are reading is you are going to apply in your dentistry whole of your life so it is important that you are not reading just for exams you are reading to understand your clinical practice better and you are improving in your clinical practice so this is you are removing all of the debris material you are removing all of the necrotic material with the help of irrigating solution irrigation we have already covered and if calcification is present that means you are going to remove it either removing with a spoon blade excavator so long uh, long blade spoon spoon excavator if you get any uh, a calcification present at the uh, pulpal floor at the pulp chamber then you are going to remove it either you can use it use the round burr so irrigation is very important to remove the debris and never use a three way syringe i have been telling you for the irrigation also never use an air syringe because it is going to create emphysema so always use the water water syringe and water syringe also you we, you which syringe we have talked about in the irrigation you are going to leave it in the comment below which which syringe is this syringe which we talked about so it has something lock syringe you are going to leave it in the comment below and also if you are using the normal syringe then you should bend it to an obtuse angle so otherwise this is going to if you are using water spray then it is going to create an air emphysema so toilet of the cavity is very important you are removing all of the debris in order to uh, contam decontaminate in order to make it bacteria free okay next one is our retention form retention form is that our gp should be tightly fit into the apical part so it uh, retention is when it is so retentive that if we are taking against the gravity it is not coming so if we are putting the gp inside our root canal the one we have prepared at least in the apical 2 to 3 mm it should have a tightly fit into the canal so how we should prepare the canal accordingly we should not make it tapering it should be little bit more of the parallel walls so the walls of our root canal which we are preparing it should be little bit more parallel not exactly parallel but close to parallel walls and if keeping we are keeping the walls parallel that means we are giving the retention form so this is to make sure that there is a seating proper seating there is a proper seal in the apical 2 to 3 mm which is very crucial which is very critical for our root for, for our root canal preparation and this is the point where seating is formed this is the point where we are protecting it from the leakage we are protecting from the percolation into the canal takes place so this is the region where the accessory or lateral canals are present so we have to make sure that the the form retention form the seal at the apical should be tight lifted now talking about the resistance form the last one is our resistance form resistance form is we are not doing overfilling we are not going beyond the apex so this is the resistance form the main primary objective of the resistance form is that we are terminating the gp up till our dentino cemento dentinal junction basically we have talk about up to the minor if you remember in the uh, cavity preparation video itself we have talk about up to the a uh, minor apical diameter we should prepare the cavity so it should not go beyond to it which is 0.5 to 1 mm short of the apex so we should go 0.5 to 1 mm short of the radiographic apex and this is how we should terminate our obturation and beyond this point if we go then there are going to be uh, tissues uh, there are going to be some affect uh, there are going to be some tissues which are going to affect in the periodontal space not in the pulp but especially in the periodontal space so we should go up till the cemento dentinal junction and this is important because otherwise there will be contamination of the bacteria if we are going if we are keeping short of the apex or it will be disastrous for us if we go beyond the apex so that is the horrible thing if we go beyond the apex 
so this kind of action wherein we are using a smaller file wherein we are using 10 number or 15 number file and we are cleaning it up up till the end is known as establishing apical patency so basically we are not letting the other things uh, at the apex the bacteria and all which uh, we are cleaning all the bacteria which are present at the apex we are not letting it come inside the root canal so we are cleaning it with a smaller number file and that is how we are maintaining this apical balance so that bacteria won't come and we are not enlarging it also because we don't want all of the bacteria that it should come inside so we are doing it with a smaller number file 10 to 15 number file so guys this is about the principles of root canal preparation and if you feel that you have learned something new today then go ahead and hit the comment box and the like button because not only you are writing exam i am also writing exam because i have to prepare notes for you every day so sir tumhare paper nahi hote hain ek bacche ke sath ek teacher ka bhi exam hota hai so please 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 do comments because it motivates me to put videos for you every day and because this help me to help you skyrocket your career and knowledge while you stay at home with your family